old. We have a few dogs, and uh, so just the I, maintenance of that is like having three more kids. It's you know? extraordinary. <laughs> we have one with that. <laughs> okay. First question: uh, What do you, what is your reaction to the facility? Oh wow! I just I'm over the moon with uh, this facility. Um, you know, so many great people came together to build this. But uh, I was here before it was built, helping the uh, you say the intention along. Um, and I heard they were going to build it in seven days, and I have to admit it. Uh, that didn't seem possible, but they made it work. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's just a beautiful thing. Well, I was drafted back in the Vietnam era. Um, I was in the Army Reserve. I didn't go to combat, uh, but certainly, um, like all veterans, you once you've been in the military, you kind of tend to pay attention to what's going on. Um, after that war ended, specifically, um, when, the, when the guys and gals came home from Vietnam, we didn't treat them very well at all. It, it was pretty terrible. Um, the government didn't do much, and also society just seemed to almost turn their back on them or want them to go away or something. You know, it had to do with the, our distaste for that particular war, I think. Um, but we as a society, you know, we kind of forgot that these are human beings and they just served their country and protected our way of life. Um, <laughs> how can I say it? Uh, people in the military know this, of course, it's in their soul, but uh, the people, let's say, down at the mall or whatever on Saturday morning aren't usually thinking about stuff like that. Um, we're getting better. It's more visible now, after almost 50 years, um, the, and the problem is more visible, but we, we need to do much more. So uh, I guess you'd say because I had been in the Army, uh, it really sort of tapped me on the shoulder about um, the subject of taking care of our veterans. I mean, to me, it just, you know, I've written a few songs that deal specifically with this, it's just so unfair uh, because you're usually grabbing people right at the prime of their life when they could be going to do other things, especially when there was a draft, of course. Um, and to just cast them out after their service is just, it's really wrong. And you know, we need to, we just need to take care of these people. I can't say, I, I was just a very lucky Dude, you know, I was in the military, um, like a lot of guys, especially at, at that time, I wanted nothing more than to get home and get out of the military, you know. Um, I don't think it was unpatriotic, I just thought it was kind of common sense. Um, and a lot of people my age, at least, felt that way about the experience. But through the years, um, I know how I felt about all the people that were my generation, and even though we had, let's say, a distaste for the Vietnam War, um, as more conflicts happened, as more um, groups of soldiers went to this theater or that theater around the world, you couldn't help but hope that things would be better for them. Um, as I said, I, you know, things are slightly better, at least the awareness is uh, talked about now in our media, um, but we've got a long, long way to go. Well, like I say, I was lucky. Um, I had a very successful musical career uh, after my time in the Army, so, you know, I, I didn't need assistance, let's say. Um, But of course, I've always felt that, you know, time and from time to time, um, when something is in my mind or on my mind about this subject, and that, uh, if I could make music, you know, make us create a song that addresses a specific need, um, 
it's kind of like that infomercial I was telling Arnie, you know, that we need uh, a, a song will carry to the public uh, a lot, actually a lot better than a speech, certainly. Uh, it's got to be a good song. Um, so that's, you know, I've tried my hand at that from time to time. I'm very proud of Las Vegas for, let's say, allowing this to happen and also for really the, the community support. Um, I saw a lot of it the day I came, to, you know, the, let's say the inaugural of this place, uh, which surprised me. I didn't know about that before. And it, I really felt a community. The mayor was here, God bless her. Um, and it seemed like there was quite a remarkable bonding uh, of folks who were, uh, let's say, in the local government. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that would happen everywhere. So, you know, uh, most people, and the contrast is, you know, undeniable. Most people think of Las Vegas as bright lights and sort of superficial and all about material things like gambling and all that, uh, having a good time and getting the heck out of here. And so for the actual community that stays here uh, to support this place, it's great. Well, I really hope we can find more people like Arnie. Um, I am very taken with his sincerity, and I think you can't help but want to join and be part of it when somebody like Arnie, uh, Arnold Stock, um, you know, just has such a passion for doing something, and it's all the right stuff. You know, it's uh, it's wonderful what he's doing, and uh, I, for one, and my wife Julie certainly uh, want to help. It just it inspires you to want to help. Uh, if I could sit down with the president, I would I would try to convince him of the sincerity of this place and of Arnold Stock. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, Mr. Trump, you know, with just a, a little uh, signing of a pen could help so much. And I think all of us as human beings and certainly as Americans um, are inspired to want to help our veterans. I, I do believe Donald Trump is certainly one of those people. You know, you say all the other things you may want to say. He's obvious. He loves his country. He's a patriot. And he's also in a position to, more than any of us to be able to do something. And uh, I think I would throw myself on the ground and, and kind of plead for help.